Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God has awakened us to another new day with all its opportunities for pleasing Him. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Morning prayer begins with the opening sentence for Easter Tide on page 34 of our Books of Common Prayer and continues on page 35 and following. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Saviour. And praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilate. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. 
His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to this point where we have the opportunity to make ourselves right with God. Let us bring before God those things which weigh heavily on our consciences and let us ask for God's forgiveness. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our psalm, which is Psalm 105, and we are reciting the verses 1 to 22. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. When there were few in number, of little account and sojourners in the land, wandering from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another, he let no one oppress them and rebuked kings for their sake saying, Do not touch my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. Then he called for a famine in the land, and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an ironed collar until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He set him as master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions. To instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders' wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come now to our first reading, and our first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 24, verses 1 to 18. Then he said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship at a distance. 
Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances, and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 pillars corresponding to the 12 tribes of Israel. He sent young men of all the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basin and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet there was something like a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven of Cranus. God did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. Alas, they beheld God, and they ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again. For Aaron set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again. For Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute, may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire. On the top of the mountain, in the sight of the people of Israel, Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Now we turn to our canticle. Jesus Saviour on page 54 of our Books of Common Prayer. Jesus Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, 
you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. And we continue with our second reading. And our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. We are reading Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 to 17. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Let us reflect now on this passage that we just read from Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 to 17. We have told that when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, then Jesus withdrew from that area um, in Judea where he was, and he withdrew to Galilee. Indeed, um, he went from his hometown to Capernaum, which is a little bit north of the <coughs> and the lakeshore, and that is where Jesus then would be based as he begins his ministry. And it's very interesting that Matthew here gives us a quotation from Isaiah chapter 9, in which the prophet talks about the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. So those very people who were in the earlier times, um, Isaiah talks about the former times, in those earlier times, invasion from the north um, took place. And those peace, those very tribes would have borne the brunt of, you know, the the occupation, if you want, of, of the invading armies. So those, the, the former times then we refer to those people at that time, those, those tribes, they were in darkness. <coughs> and now uh, we, have <coughs> we have been told that they have now seen a great light. So the Messiah has now come. And Jesus is beginning his ministry in that area. And so those people who sat in darkness and endured all, you know, those difficult times under occupation centuries ago, now they have seen quite the opposite. The Messiah himself has come. And so Isaiah prophesied some seven centuries ago that the Messiah will actually come and begin his ministry in that area north of the Sea of Galilee the land of Naphtali and Zebulun, the two tribes. So, Jesus, we are told, began his ministry proclaiming, repent, for the kingdom of heaven 
Matthew uses that expression. In other places, it says the kingdom of God has come. And yes, Jesus went about uh, with this message, calling the people to repentance. Repent, Jesus says. Now is the time. For the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, has come near. The kingdom of God is present. Of course, Jesus is the king. And where Jesus is present, the kingdom is there. But Jesus is inviting people into that kingdom, into that relationship with him. He is, he, he, his coming has meant that the kingdom is now near, it's available. And he's inviting people to enter into this kingdom. Now that kingdom, of course, we mustn't make a mistake, is not so much a place, it's really a state of affairs, a state of being, uh, where God, in the lives of people, where God is king where God reigns. It refers to God's rule. That's the kingdom. It's not so much a place as a state of being, a state of affairs. But of course, we, the first requirement, Jesus says, is repentance. There must be a radical change of heart and minds, a genuine turning away from, from sin. Repent, turn around. And Jesus, the first requirement, that, that, that we put behind us the life of sin. That, that, you know, have that genuine desire for a new life because it's a radical change. Repentance involve, involves a change of wrong, a radical change of wrong, turning away from sin. And that's the first requirement. And then, of course, once we do that and we open ourselves to God, turn into God, Seeking to live a God-focused life. Seeking to make God the center you know, of our lives. Pleasing God to be the center of our lives. Once we do that, that first change of heart, that repentance takes place, then we are now open to God's intervention, God's help, that we might live uh, the lives which really reflect this repentance, this inner change, this conversion, the new behavior, new behavior, a new whole approach to life, where God is now the center of our focus. Pleasing God is the center of our focus. That will be reflected in the new behavior. So the inner change becomes reflected in the way we view the world, the way we act in the world. God is king. When we're in the kingdom of God, when that state of affairs rule, when God rules in our lives, we're in the kingdom of God. And that is reflected in a completely new approach to life. People will see us, of course, and they talk about it, you know. You know he changed or she changed, they will say. You know, he has found God. A difference, we can see a difference in the speech, a difference in the conduct even a difference in the dress, perhaps, but you can see a difference in the, the outlook on life, a difference in the way one deals with people. There has been a radical change. It started from inside. There's a genuine repentance. A new life is being worked out in us through Christ. We have become new creatures in Christ. So, God is now the ruler, the ruler of our lives. He rules our hearts. The kingdom of God is now present. We are in the midst of it. And so, the lesson, the, the call to Jesus, then, the call of Jesus then to the people in, in that area, and the, the call to him today, of him today to us is the same. Repent. Without that change of heart, nothing can happen. But the kingdom, the king is here, and the king is inviting us to come into his kingdom. But the main requirement for us is that change of heart, repent, and live, come into that new life, the new life of the kingdom of God, 
which will give us a, a new perspective that others will see, that we ourselves will see and experience. The very, we are in the kingdom of God. We are in the very presence of God. God is inspiring our thinking and our doing and our being. We become indeed new creatures through Christ. The Lord be with you. We continue on page 42 of our Books of Common Prayer with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we pray our collect for today. We turn to page 169 and pray together the collect for the third Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith so that we may behold him in all his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue in prayer. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will and knowing it may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. And we continue as we pray for God's world and for people in every part of this world. We pray especially for those who are living under very unfavorable and even dangerous conditions. Especially for those living in places like Ukraine and Russia where there is war and fighting and death and destruction. For those living in the region of Palestine, where there is war and destruction and death on a daily basis due to fighting between Israel and the Palestinians, and all other places where people's lives are being lost on a daily basis because of man's inhumanity to man. Father, we pray your presence in the midst of all those situations. Touch hearts, Lord, that are hardened and bring peace into those hearts so that lives will be changed, there will be an end to all the pain and suffering. Father, we pray for your church worldwide for, and for all who are ministers of your word and sacraments. Continue to bless and inspire all those who work for your name, that by their work, Lord, and their dedication, they may bring peace and love and strengthen persons in their relationship with one another and with you. 
We continue to pray for the Anglican Communion worldwide. Father, we pray that our divisions may be resolved in the way of truth. We pray, Lord, for all the primates in all the various provinces of our communion. We lift up the Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury. In our own province, the church in the province of the West Indies, we pray for Howard, our Archbishop, also Bishop of Jamaica. We pray for his work, continue to guide and inspire him. For all the bishops of our several dioceses, we ask your special blessing upon them, Lord, as they seek to build your church in this province of ours. We pray for our own Bishop Claude. May your hand of power and might be upon him. Bless him and his family, Lord, at this time, and strengthen him in his leadership of your church. We pray for all our clergy in our various parishes and those who are unassigned as well. We pray, Lord, that by the work that we do, according to your inspiration, we will touch lives and bring, us, bring persons into a deeper knowledge of you. We continue to pray for our country of Trinidad and Tobago. We ask your blessings on our leaders, our president, our prime minister, members of parliament, minister, ministers of government, all those in positions of decision-making, those who are called as well to implement policy for the good of all. We pray that uh, the concern of all these people will always be the good of all the people of our country. Father, we pray your blessings on our nation, all our people. We pray that you help us to learn that you, we are called to live together in unity, to use the resources you have given us for the benefit of all, and to live in love with one another. We pray for the families of our nation, the homes in which our people live. We pray for your presence and your peace. For families in need, Lord, we ask your help and direction. We pray that as a society we will be mindful of, of the needs of others, that we will respond, Lord, according to your guidance to the needs that surround us. For all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones at this time, we lift them before you, Lord. We pray for all those parents in, in our local hospital who have lost their babies, Bring consolation, Lord, and your very presence in their lives. We continue to pray, Lord, for those who are sick and suffering and crying for relief and healing. May your hand of power and might be upon them, console them, and bring them to that place of healing and wholeness. We continue to pray for the young people in our country, for all the negative influences that tend to lead them in the wrong direction. We pray for parents and all those who have a hand in shape in their lives. We pray, Father, that such persons will be inspired by your grace and love so that they will have a positive effect on the lives of their children and, and those who are called under their authority. We continue to pray for the senior citizens among us. May we be mindful of their needs, Lord, and respond with helping hands. For people in all kinds of need today, Lord, we ask your blessings upon them. We pray for our country as a whole, Lord, that you will look upon us with your favor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.